very cold in, in my apartment right now because the heat hasn't been turned on and there's a snowstorm happening. So basically me and Winona Ryder are just like hanging out, talking about little women, um, kindling fires and putting on fake plays in the attic. Today's book report is extra special because it's Halloween themed. You're the monster mash. And because I'm talking about two books that are related and I didn't even know they would be. It'd be like if you went to summer camp and you made friends with someone, you're like, man, we both like swimming. Wow, we both like rowing in a kayak. Man, we both like crocheting sweaters. And they're like, wait, we're cousins. <laughs> what the hell? It's a big short. It's by Michael Lewis and it has a pretty cool cover. It has a bunch of hundred dollar barrels on a fish hook. That's usually what I go fishing for. Sitting on the dock of the bay. The Big Short is essentially an investigation into the subprime mortgage industry. What I really liked about this book and the way that it was written and, and organized was that it was not only very informative and, and definitely still detailed and complex, but it was presented in a way that allowed the reader to really follow the story and to understand these kind of core components of the subprime mortgage industry, how it collapsed, why it collapsed, and how certain types of really fraudulent activities were allowed to be, you know, perpetrated. What financial institution does Kenny G contract for? Goldman Sachs. When I can't afford to pay off my townhouse. My mansion sitting on 40 acres. It doesn't just affect one single consumer bond, it affects this, this huge pool of investments. You have a situation in which the leverage ratio is humongous. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. The thing that struck me as so insane about this book was that he goes to talk to people um, in the industry and people literally like don't know what's happening. Government officials were calling him to be like, yo dude, what's up? Like, can you explain this to us? Get it together. Get it. Phone is ringing. Oh my god. What do you call it when a cut off pant leg takes steroids? The big short. <laughs> I finished the big short. I was super, oh man, I was depressed, but I was so happy because I felt like I understood things a little bit better and it was really a pleasure to read. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna start my next book. Super Sad True Love Story is a book by Gary Steingart. Uh, who is a Russian-American author who lives in New York, and I was watching some of his videos. He's super funny, so I like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like that. I like that. The setting for Super Sad True Love Story is this kind of maybe 30 years in the future America. As is kind of things are not too good. The American economy has sort of collapsed. China has become the dominant world power. I'm flexing. Ain't that a there's a very conservative reactionary government. Everybody's on these crazy like little iPhone, but iPhones like times 8 million of strength iPhones. We've got two characters. Uh, one guy, his name is Lenny. He's a little bit pathetic. He's kind of older. He's balding. He's, you know, s sweaty a lot. Can I smell you? Lenny works for a corporation whose purpose is to essentially figure out how to make people immortal and how to extend human life. Lenny himself is fixated on his own death and, and the notion of mortality. You gotta get this body my head is itching so much right now though. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. It's itching. Lenny's in Rome and he meets this young girl named Eunice. Baby, you're a so this book is is a story, kind of a classic story of romance and relationships and our own vulnerabilities, but, but that's set against this very, I don't know, hostile landscape. It's half sort of um, social commentary, half the universal themes of relationship and self-discovery and our own, you know, grappling with with death and love. Super Sad True Love Story, it's an awesome book. Gary Steingart, wherever you are, why are you like predicting the future, man? That's weird. Are you wearing this hat also in 20 years in an alternate dimension? And is your name Harry?